and welcome back to the Advent series, and today is December 14th. When Trudeau made the accusation against India of killing a sick separatist a few months ago, that blew up into a storm that made Trudeau look like a complete moron. But mind you, he's been doing that just fine for the past few years. Still, his accusation was baseless, only to appeal to a sick community whose support he needed to maintain his party's hold in politics. I mean, there weren't any thorough investigations into the matter, and the sex separatist who was killed did have quite a record on him. I mean, keep in mind, too, that India had gone through the diplomatic channels to get this guy extradited to face justice. But Canada refused to play ball, so the extrajudicial killing seemed like a reasonable if not agreeable, course of action. In the wider geopolitical scope, India is really the only viable option to act as a counterweight to China, who has been making aggressive moves in the South China Sea over the past year or so, and it doesn't do anyone good to piss off someone who could be of great value in that region. I mean, that's what I find so frustrating with modern politicians. They've grown into the ideologue mentality that it's all about the highfalutin ideals that we must aspire to in order to become a greater society. The problem with ideologues is that they're impractical. They refuse to look at the bigger picture, and they refuse to make reasonable concessions to ensure the greater good. And they shoot from the hip, and when the blowback comes, they get swept away. I mean, take Biden's row with Saudi Arabia over the Khashoggi incident. He was so wedded to the idea of enacting justice for a murder critic, he jeopardized the overall economic interest of the United States. And as much as I can sympathize with the family for the loss, I mean, this was a reckless and fruitless endeavor. The relationship's on the men. Sort of. But it took quite a while and a lot of smoothing out. I mean, we must also keep in mind that Khashoggi wasn't an American citizen, and so... It seemed to me that odd to me that Biden would stick his neck out for a man whose allegiances were not even to us. Again, it's admirable that he was devoted to the cause of human rights, but the cause is ideal, not pragmatic. I mean, we must sometimes accept the bad in order to function because we are ensuring the guarantee of, st of the stability, both in the economic and political sense. Honestly, if the human rights devotees were running the show, we would all be poor and rummaging for resources because we'd be pissing everybody off. I mean, we wouldn't have any friends, well, not as many, and, dare I say, their aim would have the exact opposite of what they were accomplishing. War. It's a noble sentiment to stand up for the well-being of all, and we can preach and huff and puff over how every everyone has inviolable dignity. But in the end, ensuring people have their basic needs met is paramount to respecting dignity. Yes, it is a human right to ensure people have their needs met. But the issue here is that the activists and ideologues lose, lose sight of that. It's all well and good to go to the extremes when you're already coming from a well-to-do family with an Ivy League degree and making six figures. But when your actions and words affect the people who are not in the same position and would suffer more because of these words and actions than benefit, then one must step back and process where the disconnect lies. Because the wealthy human rights activists will see the world one way and believe it needs to be fixed according to their set of solutions. The person for whom the cause is fought may see things another way. Recently, Biden pulled a Trudeau and also accused India of attempting to a kill mission on the sick. Again, I wonder what the point was. If we get blue in the face over something like this, we can take stock and remember what we did in Pakistan a decade ago when we went in and killed Osama bin Laden. Can we also remember that when it comes to politics, it's best advice to not piss off our friends or at the least embarrass them. After all, if we need them, have use of them, and aren't marshalling our military resources to monitor and possibly hinder them, they would consider they would be considered our friends. I hope the State Department would do well to remember that. 